It took researchers two seasons to travel across the cold, barren landscape to reach Mercer Lake in Antarctica. Matthew Siegfried works with the Colorado School of Mines. It's a little harder in Antarctica because, first of all, there's a big ice sheet above the lake that we're interested in. And then it's far from pretty much everything. And so all of our logistics went through McMurdo Station, which is about 500 miles from the lake we were interested in sampling. Tractors pulled enough gear over the ice to build a small village and set up a drill. Instead of using a steel bit to bore through the ice, researchers melted snow, sterilized it, and heated the water to 200 degrees. And we take a fire hose of hot water, literally like a multi-inch diameter fire hose made of Kevlar, and we just point it into the ice and we go down. Scientists needed to be efficient because the hole they pierced in the 3,500 feet thick ice sheet over the lake began to refreeze as soon as they cut it. So when we accessed Mercer Subglacial Lake, the water column was about 15 meters thick. So that's pretty, that's a pretty deep lake. Venturelli was there during the collection. She says long metal cylinders were dropped through the hole and into the lake. Researchers sent containers to the bottom where they captured a sample of the sediment on the lake floor. What those devices came back with had never been found before. The samples had layers of sediment. Much like tree rings, these layers revealed what's happening in this hidden body of water. But in this subglacial environment, we had never seen something like this before. But we have thought since um, we initially observed these lakes underneath the ice sheet that they should reflect something of the overlying ice. Previous attempts to recover sediment cores from underwater lakes failed because the region they're sampling is churned up by the ice above the water. This lake was different. It's a pancake, and we think about sediments being deposited. It'll deposit one kind of sediment, and then another layer goes on top of that. That might be a different type of sediment, and on and on we go. Um, and that's how we uh, draw paleo climate conclusions every day in ocean cores, for example. Those layers tell the story of the lake and the surrounding ice, and it tells a story which fills a gap in the scientific record. Core samples from the ocean floor around Antarctica tell the geological history of the region, but only until about a thousand years ago. Satellite imagery has a pretty good record over the past two decades, but these lake cores extracted in this years-long effort could help fill that historical gap. It's not only what is there, but it's how long has it been there, and it tells us a lot more about the process. Helen Fricker is a glaciologist at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography who helped put the expedition together. So it's kind of a time scales problem. We've only sampled for a very small window and we need to be able to extend that backwards in time and also help us predict forwards in time to see how things might change in the future. Fricker says the sediment cores will allow researchers to record the history of the lake locked up under thousands of feet of ice. It will also help them understand the ice sheet above the water. The continent holds more than 60 percent of the world's fresh water, and it could become a major factor as sea levels rise on a warming planet. It's basically subglacial hydrology, and so we need to get that right in our models. So it can help us constrain that process and understand it better so we can put it into a model which predicts the future of the ice sheet. So that's what the data will eventually be able to inform. It is common for scientists to build a climate record from sediment samples recovered in lakes in temperate climates. These sediments are the first of their kind recovered from under the ice. Findings from the expedition are published in the March 9th edition of the journal Geology. Eric Anderson, KPBS News.